you know, a couple things here before we get started. One, you know, I do, uh, you know, the next couple of days will be, will be, there'll be a lot of uh, stuff going on with Terry and I, but every guy we got in that locker room, uh, I appreciate their effort the entire spring, uh, summer, camp. Uh, we got some tough decisions ahead of us, but I'm always uh, thankful for those guys' efforts. Regardless of pro football, they get put, paid. These guys have worked uh, extremely hard, and this was a good way to cap the preseason for us. Uh, preseason or not, it's good to get a win at home. Uh, yes, Coach, uh, could you discuss the play of Desmond Ritter today before touchdown drives? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, that's why you need to play these guys. There's no way to, de to develop. You can simulate things in practice. Uh, you, you teach them lessons, and sometimes you get the best thing to do is, is to go out there and play and, and work through it. You're going to find out a lot about people. First play of the game, we had one guy up front go the wrong way, and uh, he let one mistake become two, trying to play hero ball. You know, you can live to the next down. So he understood that. He didn't, he didn't pout, puts his head down, comes out the next drive. I thought he was, was very solid. Uh, you know, then we, we didn't have a, you know, we lost a couple situational things uh, on third down or, or didn't handle overcoming uh, a backed up on a penalty. And then uh, the last one, I wanted to launch one at, before the half. You know, he had to move in the pocket until he had to reset because I thought we had a chance with Frankie. I thought Frankie had a good move on that and thought I'd give him a chance. And mm -hmm. end of the half, you know, who cares? But there's a lot of guys that they care more about social media, stats, or whatever it is, and Desmond's a real football player. Mm -hmm. And you got to come out and keep swinging and keep things in perspective. So you can put the second one on me and move and trying to, trying to get a play before the half to see if we can launch one. Dude, you're like the, you're the new CP, Liam. <laughs> Coming in here and crashing, man. For Daryl, uh, Liam Smith. How you doing, bud? Good? You going to say hello to everybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, so, what's that? No, he's, uh, he'll, he'll be my lineman. But, <laughs> but D-Lad, I, I was proud of these guys. We, we won a game in all three phases. Uh, Pinion punted well. Obviously, Q Bell. Defense handled sudden change and, you know, made him kick field goals and we were able to score uh, touchdowns in the red zone. And that's, that's the name of the game. Any update on Etheridge? It was have to see. You know, obviously, the, when every time somebody gets carted off, it looks bad. Um, not to be evasive, but we won't know until we get, you know, doctors looked at him. And, and we're very hopeful, but we'll have to see. Coach, can you describe what you saw from your running backs that will either make it difficult or easier in your final decisions for the roster? Yeah, they ran hard. But it takes all 11 of us in the run game. Quarterback, get us in the right look. We put a lot on the quarterback. That's why I get, I'm get i pushing Dez so hard. There's a lot more than just call and run what we ask our guys to do. I thought the line, the receivers, they blocked. And it, it, it's fun as a play caller. If you're able to get a lead – and, and you get these guys in a flow, and you're just watching. There's nothing I enjoy more. Maybe I'm messed up in the head, maybe because I was a lineman. But that, that's pretty to me when you're in the fourth quarter and you got a lead, and watching these guys come off the ball and churning out over two yard runs to eight, to nine. Huntley popped a big one. Um, but it takes all 11 to run the football for us. You talk about the decisions of the next coming days. What does the next coming days look like for your coaching staff and the front office? Well, it's our football staff. So that's what we call ourselves, our football staff. We're a team. So we got a lot of work ahead of us. Again, you know, there's, a, there's going to be a lot more transactions, the way this thing's going to go. There's a lot more mechanisms now that you can use. It, you know, you're just going to have to let it play out because you're able to get more guys on the practice squad, um, di different mechanisms. You know, it may look like the roster on Wednesday may look a little bit different on Thursday and so on. With this defensive line, it really felt like this was a big game for them in terms of y'all deciding what you have depth-wise. How did sure. you feel like this defensive interior played today? Well, I was excited. I mean, a lot of it, too, is not just the sacks, but it's when you're running certain pressure packages or games, everybody being coordinated on the same page so you don't open rush lanes or you don't lose contain. The guys get the ball out. Even Troy, he was he was upset with himself. You know, he needs to make that play. But guys kept finishing an effort, and then he was still able to get the ball out. He threw it up, and and uh, Nate Dan Landman was able to pick it off. With the wide receivers and the decisions that y'all have to make with that group specifically, I know you said the other day you're looking for guys who you can trust. Do you feel like you have that right now with this group? I do. 
We can use some more attention, huh? <laughs> Coach, uh, first of all, we'd be remiss to not congratulate you on being the first Falcons coach to win a preseason game at uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But seriously, though, you mentioned the uh, home field. You talked about that, that the practice here, as you said, it's only a preseason game, but how important just kind of establishing – a winning culture at home, which has not important. not been the case here the last few years. It's fine. Listen, I mean, guys, you can't sit there and live in the past or get anxious about people. But what we're trying to build is something real, and it's going to happen organically. we got to do our part. I love our fans. They come out here. They're passionate. The city loves the Falcons. we got to get people who come in here so it can be like a, a, a big party on Sundays. But we got to do our part. And it'll happen. It'll happen organically, and we got to do our part and build, build a, a winning culture and do things the right way. Because this place, I promise you, will be rocking when we get this thing rolling. Anything else? Coach, you already answered this a little bit, but how beneficial is it that Desmond Ritter got all the way to the fourth quarter and he was able to play a lot of football today? It's huge. So it was our strategy going in. I feel about as good as you can to get the, to execute the strategy in preseason. What we wanted to accomplish, playing everybody, the joint practices, the competition that we had, and there's a reason why. And, and Felipe. You know, even there, I had to let him pick the ball up once. I thought he threw a pretty good ball there at the end. But uh, they can't get enough reps. And to try to develop these quarterbacks and get Marcus going again, uh, they took a ton of reps with two of those guys. So, and able to use the preseason the right way, and I was, I was pleased. Wasn't perfect, but he got better every time he went out there. Do you feel good about what you've seen from Desmond, especially? I feel good about what I've seen from Marcus and, and all the offensive players, too. Uh, yeah, Coach, uh, could you talk to, uh, about getting Dion and Isaiah Oliver some yeah, action? Absolutely. Um, part of those guys, you know, they're on different return to play. They're not on the same timetable. That's why every injury is different. Uh, I, I was really pleased with Isaiah. You know, sometimes it's not just a physical hurdle, it's a mental hurdle. And whether, you know, you guys may not realize it or, you know, nobody in the stands are, but Dean called the same call that Zay blissed on and got hurt against Washington. Sometimes you need to overcome it. And when he called that, you know, I, I wanted to see Zay go back. And you basically have to face those, those fears or to know the guy's back. And so uh, we'll continue to assess, but I was very pleased with Isaiah today. And then just getting to the roster situation, are the mechanisms you speak of kind of, you know, waivers, uh, you know, players Everything. coming from Everything's all on the different table. paths? Right. And it's going to be around the league. Mm -hmm. And so we've got a great football staff, and we'll go for every contingency plan and, and – Make sure we get the uh, the right guys through and and, and keep and turn over every every stone we can to make sure we got the best roster available. Anything? Else? Say go Falcons. Go Falcons. There we go. Thank you, guys. Oh, one more. Sorry. One more question. Um, what's your overall thoughts of the just the progression of this team? Yeah, I think this team. Um, we got a chip on our shoulder. You know, we're not. We got something to prove. And so I think we've been competitive from day one. We don't, you know, as in like the peripheral opponents can, can say what they want. They can rank us 40th uh, roster and 42nd coaching staff out of 32. We don't care. We're going to go compete and we got to do our best. Got a lot of work ahead of us, but to get ready to roll for September 11th when New Orleans comes in here.